My name is Chase Robinson. I'm the president of the Graduate Center. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you to Earth Day at the Graduate Center. What you may not know is that today, April 22nd, is also Lenin's birthday. <laughs> now, while the parallels with Marxism may well end there, tonight will touch on the economic, the sociological, the philosophical, and perhaps even the revolutionary. That it is also Nick Stern's birthday must portend something of consequence. <laughs> In fact, it was Professor Stern who remarked that tonight's pairing of inequality and climate change bridges what has been, to date, an underexamined link. It is this type of radical thinking that he noted may spark something important. Do enjoy it. But still, I mean, clearly there are issues of equity that come up very, very robustly when one talks about climate change. You know? It's the rich of the world who have emitted so far most of the, the CO2 in the air that is now warming the climate. And it's the poor of the world that are going to be most affected by the devastating impacts. So both of you have really written about this from you know, kind of like different perspectives. And I would love to hear your, your thoughts about, about, about the interaction kind of broadly. Like, what can we say about how climate change affects inequality? And what can we say about how inequality affects climate change? And perhaps, I mean, we can talk about this later, what is the equitable way to address climate change? So Joe, if you would take this on, I'd be very grateful. Okay. The, the, the most important aspect, as you said, climate change is a global phenomena. And so the impacts in terms of inequality are going to be global. Uh, if the reason why climate change is going to increase inequality globally, undo some of the progress that's been made on that global uh, increase in uh, reduction in inequality, uh, is that the countries that are most affected by it are those in the tropics. Uh, th that's where the, the temperature rise will have most devastating effect. Also, it's going to have a, 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 the most devastating effect on fragile agricultural economies. Uh, you know, there'll be country uh, regions with their, where the desertification will get worse. Uh, you know, climate change is often talked about as global warming, but there are many other dimensions to it. One other dimension, for instance, is that, that has been brought out in the last few years is a lot more volatility in, in weather, more, peri more droughts, as we've been seeing <laughs> in the United States, uh, more uh, periods of freezing, uh, so uh, more hot spells. So, and, and it's the fragile parts of the world in which a disproportionate number of poor people live that are going to be hurt the most. Another dimension of, inequality, of, of, of climate change is the rising of the sea level. And then if you look around the world, where will that have the biggest impact? A country like Bangladesh, 135 million people, uh, a third of that country will be underwater. Uh, and, you know, uh, there, are, there are poor Pacific islands that will be underwater. So those are, are, are among the people in this global, in our global society that will be hurt the most. Yeah. Um, Nick, would you like to, to take this one? Yeah, just to underscore what um, Joe said, uh, climate change has its impacts in large measure through water or its absence, storms, floods, droughts, desertification, uh, sea level rise. Um, it's through water or the absence of it that the impacts come. And extreme weather events are a very big part of that, as we saw here in New York with Tropical Storm Sandy, as we saw in Katrina and we've seen in the Philippines and in Bangladesh and uh, throughout the world. The extreme weather events are uh, fundamental manifestations of um, what happens when you disturb uh, weather systems. Those extreme things happen with greater se severity and, uh, uh, and they can be more often. So if you want to get a take or a numbers take on the inequality, it helps, I think, in understanding it to look at natural disasters. And 95% uh, or so of the deaths 
from natural disasters are in developing countries. Um, they're seven eighths, uh, sorry, six sevenths of the six sevenths of the population, but 95% of the deaths. Um, the, if you look at uh, the cost to those countries in terms of a fraction of national income, that fraction is uh, 20 times in developing countries than rich countries. And uh, so you can see that if climate change is in large measure about natural disasters, and it is, the severity and frequency of them, uh, then we can see by looking at natural disasters that they really do hit poor people uh, harder. And we saw that in New Orleans. Uh, we saw that in the same year with the uh, typhoon that hit Mumbai. Within urban communities as well as rural communities, it's the poorer people who get uh, hit hardest by these natural disasters. So it's difficult to get numbers on big things like this, but I think those um, numbers on natural disasters do reflect uh, the uh, inequality of the impact of, um, of climate change. But of course, there's also the, the question the other way around, which you put. And I don't know if you want us to comment on the relationship between um, uh, inequality and climate change. We talked about climate change and inequality. And again, um, you have a strong suspicion that it's powerful, but the numbers and evidence are quite difficult to nail down. But it is true that um, more unequal societies have greater emissions per unit of output. Uh, there's some data there. It's true that uh, more unequal societies have uh, less recycling. It's true that more unequal societies, if you poll business people on attitudes to um, action, attitudes to international agreements, they're worse in more unequal societies.